okay, we have 10 now. So it's uh, 6 05, and I'm going to call the January 26th, 2021 special governing board meeting of CV Fiber to order. Uh, let's start the recording. Okay, are there, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Uh, public comment, is there anything folks would like to talk about that it is not currently on the agenda? Just one thing I want to put out there, Jeremy. I've, I've, this is Jerry. I've got a seven o'clock hard stop, and okay. I'd like to have a uh, treasurer's report type thing on the next agenda. On the on the next our next Don't meeting know what agenda. I'll have on our next meeting agenda. Not sure right. what I'll have, but I'll let you know what I got. Okay. Yeah. So we're actually ob obliged to have those reports at every regular meeting, anyway. So I will I will definitely include that. Uh, Tom. Uh, just a reminder that we had my motion from the last meeting was tabled to the next one and we just have to decide if we're going to continue to table it or address it okay so we can add an item this was for the um poll audit rfp was that uh no it was around policy um documentation okay so let me add a so let's put that um let's put that before our discussion of the 2021 timeline um all right so put that there great uh any anything else any other changes to the agenda or other public comment that we need to uh address okay moving on um i don't see uh jeremy matt for note-taking purposes, but uh, I, can, I can always go back and uh, review the video at ORCA or the audio recording that I'm making right now, do that later. Um, I move that we <clears throat> approve the consent agenda as presented, so that just includes the approval of the January 12th minutes that Jeremy sent to all of us. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Hi. Hi. Any opposed abstentions or roll call requests? I'll abstain. I couldn't find it. Okay. Okay. Motion passes with one abstention. And that was uh, Tom Fisher abstaining. So um, moving along. Um, Business Development Committee's report. I'm, I don't know where, where David is. Um, be, give me a moment and I will... Um, I'm going to send him a message quick. Um, but maybe while uh, while I'm waiting to hear back from David Ray, would would you be you feel capable of uh, reporting back for the Business Development Committee? Uh, no, I'd rather David do that. Thanks. Okay, let me just shoot him a message. Stand by. Okay, so we'll see if he gets back to me in time. All right, so let's um, let's skip that one for right now. We'll come back to it later if we can. The uh, project manager position announcement approval. Um, Siobhan, I think you were you're still spearheading this. Is that right? You and and Ray. I well it. it huh? It went through the business development committee as approved and was sent out. And I guess we need to know, I guess a motion would be appropriate. Has everybody had a chance to read it? Should we worry about whether everybody's had a chance to read it? I, I, I'm not sure what the procedure is here. Well, everybody, I mean, you sent out several <laughs> several edits over time. So if, if anybody had something to say about it, I expect, I think, uh, it did get forwarded to the whole board, right? Yes, the full, full board got it a, a couple days ago. Okay. Um, what and do you think? On, Any... It was on the it was on the agenda to be warned. I, I mean, it was warned on the agenda. So 
I just don't want to short shrift the discussion if there is any. That's all. Okay. Well, I mean, again, you but but you've had several days mm -hmm. where people could have weighed in. I mean, certainly the business development committee has had a chance to talk about this. Yeah. Is there any is there any work that you feel that still needs to be done to this or should No, we... I think it is ready for prime time. Um, so I will I am I move that we approve the uh, project manager position announcement that was approved by the business development committee uh, to be sent to the communications committee to make it pretty and put it up on the website and we also have to decide uh, uh, that's my motion okay seconded okay that was so moved tom. by siobhan seconded by tom fisher any further discussion i'll just really quick want to add here that we need to decide where we're going to put this up and if we're going to authorize funds to advertise it like we did last time and i'm done henry I, you had your hand up henry yeah go for it yeah um I, I think just uh to put this in context that we are also in discussion with C, cvrpc about them doing the administrative side of that and and I guess it's the conclusion then that there is no overlap between these two roles that we're not going to be having this CVRPC um, doing project management and therefore these are independent uh, activities. Bay says yes. So okay. Well, yeah, it was um, also looking at the prices that the planning commission has for their project managers hours it's higher than what we were quoted last time for consultants no. so uh, not a lot but a little and uh, like six bucks or so an hour yeah yeah as as i recall the the way that um the way that i heard this described i forgot who said this is that yeah we had this was designed with the idea of just like you said henry sort of segregating these two um these two responsible not two responsibilities but se segregating the responsibilities so that we would have the project manager project managing and if we needed additional help elsewhere we would go get it yeah that way we'd have somebody laser focused and and david did go through and remove the the list of tasks that we had in the ad that he felt were an overlap were an administrative thing that we were going to have the rpc do so that that has already been passed through a, a, a filter there. Okay. Cool. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. The um, I think let, let's approve it, and then we'll talk about uh, authorizing funds and where we want to put it. Uh, does anybody have any further discussion about the uh, the ad, the job description itself? Okay. I expected everybody's ready for the vote then. So uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions or roll call requests? Aye. Okay, so motion passes unanimously. Thanks everybody. Um, where should we put it? Uh, how much do we wanna spend to advertise it and such? Um, I think we have a bit of the uh, CARES Act funds still available for um, for this item, we certainly did not spend all of the um, kind of the, the advertising money from the uh, previous round. Actually, no, I don't think it was CARES Act. Maybe it was a different different bucket. But we had a specifically we had a uh, a pile of funds for hiring a project manager, the process of hiring. So that included uh, we, last time we spent it on attorney's fees. We spent it on LinkedIn. I don't think we put it anywhere else. Um, my suggestion is that we not use LinkedIn. Very, very low signal to noise ratio. It was yep. not. It was not effective. Um, so we could do Indeed if folks think that that would be better. Um, we could advertise it in the newspapers. I mean, people still pick up dead trees periodically, right? That's still a thing. Or look at websites. Or look at websites. Sure. So yeah, we could. Classified. Yeah. Could post it on Craigslist, maybe. That's kind of a joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about, how about uh, VT Digger? Um, how about um, uh, Front Porch Forum? 
uh, our Facebook page. Um, do we have and any our other website? Social media? Our website, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, send out a press release. Uh, see who picks that up, if anybody. It could be local news that does pick that up. Okay, so um, seven days too. Does seven days still do? Yeah, seven, seven days, days still has. Do, uh, like that? Yes, they do. All right, yeah. so uh, putting it on Digger uh, or seven days is, is going to cost. Um, Digger can also will also accept press releases, but we have to pay for them. You can't just drop a press release and they put it on the site anymore. Um, is that it said, cheaper that to said, do an ad or cheaper to do a press release? Well, so it it. <laughs> On VT Digger, it depends on how you want it to appear. If you want it to have one of these sort of um, banner ads that's floating around at the bottom, like join our team as project manager. Um, I don't think VT Digger has a job section though, per se. I think it might make more sense just to do a paid press release there rather than a banner ad. I just, I just don't know that you're gonna get enough VT Digger viewers, readers that are also looking to be project managers, but maybe I'm maybe I'm completely off. Uh, I I am leaning towards what you're saying. That makes sounds reasonable to me, but I I don't have any counter argument to offer. Ray, so I, I can't imagine that, that this is going to cost any more than like twenty five hundred bucks. Why don't we just approve a motion to spend up to twenty five hundred dollars for advertising, and whatever we don't spend goes back into our treasury. Okay, so let me before we say an. Um, was that a motion, Ray, before I breach sure, protocol I'll here? Sure, I'll make a motion. Okay, so Ray has a motion to get it rolling. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go back and look at our um, grant accounting, and I wanna see where that, uh, what that amount is. Just, so recruit and hire project manager. Uh, actually, from the CARES Act money, we are over that. Um, we still have some money in the outreach and communications um, bucket, but that's not really um, that's not really appropriate for this. Legal fees, you know, if we were vetting a contract or something, we could probably argue that as well. So um, we would just be taking this out of uh, this kind of the unrestricted funds that we got from the Vermont Community Foundation or the donations that we have. Um, how do y'all feel about a cap at twenty five hundred dollars? I think that's Probably a lot, but it's rather a too high cap than a too low cap. Right. I mean, it's not like you're gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna spend all of that. You know, you'll you'll spend what's necessary, and then you don't have to come back to us if it's. And so, so there's some clarification here too. Who um who is putting this out? I mean, who's gonna take responsibility for listing the ads? I mean, uh, business I'm development committee. committee, communications uh, committee, or me? Um, communications. Since they're not here, I think it's appropriate. <laughs> okay, and then then they can coordinate with uh, <clears throat> coordinate with Jerry. Jerry, are you on the communications committee, perchance? I am not, but coordinating with me is pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have them. Um, I'll Chuck coordinate with Jerry. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Twenty five hundred dollars to put this out um, where it needs to go, uh, Henry. Um, I, I don't know if Vermont Business Magazine has uh, classified, but I, I'd check into that one too. That's a that's a good spot. Um, my comment about Front Porch Forum is advertising to everybody on Front Porch Forum statewide is going to be extremely expensive. Oh, I thought he just meant posting our, yeah. our in our communities. Our delegate posts. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, if we, I mean, that doesn't require any sort of authorization. Yeah. Knock yourselves out. Um, but like paid, um, yeah, paid Facebook ads. So if we like put a post or we post a job on Facebook, that's easy enough to pay a little bit and boost it. Now, I mean, this is communications committee territory, so maybe to not bother getting into the weeds at this point, but do we yeah. want to, do we want to target people mostly in Vermont? Are we going to expect the person to be physically in Vermont, actually, the yeah, the ads as or the job description says work remotely. Okay. Yeah, so I, I I'm happy to entertain somebody who's not in Vermont. They're just going to have to 
go to Orange. Get through an interview. Okay. Tom? I think I heard us mention posting it on the website, and then I don't think we have a place on the website to put it at the moment. Another thing I know Ray's been working on. Uh, we will. We will, by time. Okay. Yeah, so I think um, Marjorie's making pretty steady progress. Essentially, whenever there's something that needs to get done there, it, it happens. Okay, so I'm feeling uh, feeling the silence. So I assume that everybody's ready for the motion, um, or ready for the vote, rather. So we're voting on a cap of $2,500 for the Communications Committee to uh, to spend on uh, publishing the job ad for the CV Fiber project manager. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or roll calls? Motion passes unanimously. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see, back to the agenda. Um, I'm going to assume also, Ray, the change of the name of the uh -huh. charter for the Business hey. Development Committee is going David's to be. Okay. Yeah, well, Chuck's not here too, and this is partially uh, partially my fault for um, warning this as late as I did. I should have had this out on on Friday, but I'm a slacker. Slacker. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Whole family of slackers, as you know. Um, <laughs> so the uh, yeah, so the name and charter of the, the Business Development Committee, I guess, will sit on this. Or till, so I mean I I don't do do we have it? I believe I David David sent it out. Okay, let's let, let me just go make sure. Let me see. This is some name change and charter pulling inventory R, uh, RFP. Okay, CV you fiber might development. Wait for David just for the discussion. Okay, so, but the. I mean, the Business Development Committee, which is now the Planning and Development Committee, um, you, you guys all approved this charter as it's presented now, right? Yes. As a, as a committee, yes. And, and, um, and it needs to be adopted by the board as the charter. It does yep. define the, the limits of its role and its responsibilities to report to the board, et cetera. And so, you know, if you agree with that, then uh, we're, I think we're good to go. We just vote it, vote it up. But um, if you want to take some more time to look at it, I see on January 24th that David sent it to uh, the yep. board. And hopefully you have it in front of you. Yep, I do have it in front of me. So, I mean, does anybody have any objections or thoughts? Or should we just roll this out? I mean, we're not handing them, you know, infinite power or anything here. Are you able to share it on your screen, Jeremy? Uh, I can try if my bandwidth will um, will work. Hold on one second. Really need to get you something more than two cans and a string. <laughs> yeah, I can I can tether to my phone, which is a little bit better at the beginning of the month. But once I burn through that data in about three days, then then they start <laughs> throttling me. All right, so I'm going to do this, share my screen, should just share the, all right, how's that? Can you make it bigger? Is it, I mean, um, zoom it. You have controls on the right hand side, plus and minus. A lot bigger. Oh, oh nice. Thank cool? you, Ray. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we have the so this is the planning and background and development committee. So we're changing the uh, the business development committee to the PDC and the PDC's responsibilities, rolling through your master plan for board review and adoption. So I assume that will be coming out 
at, at some point in the next you know, month or two or three, develop an annual strategic activity plan, um, so no later than July 1st, to help the preparation of the budget. That's awesome. Maintain a master schedule of annual activities and assignments. Maintain a public dashboard showing status ongoing development contract work. Uh, conduct planning and related is as approved by the board. Recommend network development priorities. Manage surveys, topographic records, poll audit related to planning, contracting, and construction, as well as mapping and related support activities. Draft and recommend statements of work for RFPs. Review development related proposals, make recommendations. Work with local, state, and federal agencies as necessary, such as EPA, Public Utilities Commission, and if they create it, the new Community Broadband Association. Yes. Uh, development and propose develop and propose agreements, MOUs. Go ahead, Ray. That was the Broadband Development Authority, was it? Anyway, it was. Um, it was C CBA. Yeah, community uh, which is yeah to re to replace. Yeah, the Vermont Yeah, to replace the, to the VTA. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're essentially the, all, all that that language was based on the Vermont Telecommunications Authority, which is uh, still technically floating out there, but not doing much. All right. Um, develop post agreements, MOUs with partner organizations, oversee the project manager, participate with other CV fiber communities with at least one PDC member. Uh, okay, so the PDC member with a member on the other CV fiber committees. Reporting back to the board monthly, we've been doing that anyways. Um, okay, and then with these folks as the members, anything in here leap out at you that needs to be added or removed or otherwise? I would like to underscore that line under membership, and it says membership may include delegates, alternates, and community members appointed by the board. All of them appointed by the board, but mm -hmm. in, in particularly the fact that we're going to be open to community members who are interested and want to be appointed. It, it would, you know, give us a little more bandwidth, perhaps, if we can get some active people involved in our committees. For sure. And there's certainly been some um, some desire for that. I've I've heard from people who <clears throat> want to make sure that we succeed and are you know willing to help out in doing things like this. So yeah, this is this is great. Okay, so it was um, moved and seconded. Any other commentary about this? Okay. I'm hearing silence, which tells me it's time to vote. So to uh, accept this change in the charter of the Business Development Committee and changing it to the Planning and Development Committee with all of the uh, all of the elements in this charter, um, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, or roll call requests? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to stop sharing. Thanks, Sonia. That's great. Uh, Tom, I see your hand up. Uh, I think this is awesome, and I think um, I don't want to push work on anybody, but it would be awesome if the other committees over time managed to develop their own things like this. So everybody understands what the roles are that each group's doing, especially if they bring on new people. Yes, that's a terrific idea because then you can kind of hand them like, here's the charter, here's what we're responsible for, and you can kind of get on with, you know, get on with the work. Okay. That goes all all on top of the one for the uh, finance committee, aren't you, Jerry? Yeah, there'll be one for the finance committee coming out. There's already and, uh, one. As soon as we add up all the numbers in the columns. We got to do that first. <laughs> well, there's short columns now. <laughs> so, uh, Sh Sh Siobhan, you, you wanted to add. I was just saying the finance committee does have a charter. Yeah. It was it was adopted a couple of years ago. Yep, back in 2018. Yeah. Do, do we know where that lives? Can can that float to the top so that we can see it 
somehow. I sent it out a couple I, I would have weeks ago, no and I sent idea it to where you, to Jerry. It. Oh, I didn't have your phone, no, your, ad, you your email address, Jerry, so I, didn't, I don't think I sent it to you. Here. Okay, I'll send you my email address. Here, I'll just forward it. Or Jeremy can forward it. That works, too. Easy peasy. All right. Yeah, easy. Perfect. Thank you. It is on its way to you. Henry? Um, just one comment. I think that this is a, a good thing for the business development committee, but I think we're going to have to consider uh, who's going to pick up the things that we're not going to be um, doing. And um, I don't know if selection of the project manager is within that charter or not, but I mean, there are other things as well. So that, I think that's a follow on action. Well, and we can always, always task additional things to committees too, ad hoc that aren't necessarily part of the charter. So that's the other other duties as assigned that always gets thrown in at the end of uh, job descriptions. So yeah, you're not certainly not off the hook for that. And this one did say that uh, oversee the project manager, Henry. Okay, all right. All right, so I think we're done with that one. Uh, Tom, you wanna circle back around to the policy discussion? Yeah, um, so I think the policy, I, I don't have it in front of me what I wrote, but um, I was thinking at the end of that last discussion, um, it probably needs to be rewritten anyways. Um, so I think I would put this forward uh, as an amendment to my um, motion, and I'm copying to paste here just a second, um, making it much simpler. Uh, there we go. Moving that the policy committee consolidates and provides to the board in writing all active policies that have been approved by the board in whatever format they decide best. In addition, the policy committee will update the above policy documentation periodically at a frequency they think warranted, but not less than annually. Um, so I think, uh, Jeremy, well, you seconded the motion. So I will, yeah, I will second this again. And so this is a, we can consider this like a strike all replacement motion unless anybody yeah. objects. Uh, any discussion about this? This is kind of a, a pivot from what, where you were before, but I think this, is, this makes sense. I agree. Well, the reason for the pivot, I think, was around um, the other major component I mentioned before was having documentation um, for contract purposes. And I think that's already being covered in other ways um, and doesn't really need to be called out separately. It was more just being able to provide for everybody what our policies are um, so we can all stay up to date on them. Cool. Any any other thoughts on Tom's motion? I think the only thing I would add to this and not add to the motion is that uh, we publish our policies online. Yes, that would be a great idea. Siobhan, I heard an intake of breath. <laughs> what's, what's on your mind? <laughs> oh, it's just thinking about um, ages ago, I wrote a community support policy that we never actually pursued further because the policy committee kind of, we weren't able to meet. And uh, I'd like to make sure that that was part of this, but since I'm on the policy committee, I'll be helping to this consolidation. So I'll be able to put it forward, so. All right, and our, our standing, uh, or our <clears throat> acting policy committee chair is is on the call with us. So, uh, Alan, do you have any thoughts about this one way or the other? I have been going through three and a half years of minutes and notes to find all the policies. It's kind <laughs> of an interesting exploration. <laughs> so, so sounds like Tom's going to get his wish after all. Um, and then I don't whenever... think it's going to be a long list, Tom. By the way, it, there there have been a lot of ideas, like the most recent, the one that Siobhan just mentioned but nothing came of them. So yeah. I'm trying to list those as well, but the actual number of policies I don't think is vast. I think so. I, mean, I think I mentioned on the previous time that I'm willing to jump in with any help. I don't mean to make work for other people. I, I've, got, I've got all the minutes, I think, and, and, and notes, and I was on the policy committee, so I have notes of those meetings as well. So I'm just going through all that and trying to pull it together. Sounds like Indiana Gilbert's on top of it. <laughs> I'm on top of this, all right, thank you. Yay! <laughs> all right, wonderful. Any other thoughts or comments, questions? All right, so 
So Tom's motion that the policy committee consolidates and provides to the board in writing all active policies, etc. cetera. Uh, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or requests for roll call. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thanks everybody. Um, moving along to the discussion about the 2021 timeline, Vermont legislature and grants. So um, Ray, um, I would like to refer to the email that you sent very recently about the 2021 timeline. Um, because you're talking about um, assuming CV Fiber had the money. I don't know who you sent that to because you BCC'd folks, but yeah. I saw it and it looks, it's pretty um, pretty interesting. But I mean, it's you're at least thinking about what the rest of the year, actually the rest next three years looks like, which is good. Yeah, so um, I uh, developed that and I sent it, uh, I copied you and I sent it to the Business Development Committee. They have a call on Thursday with the idea of getting some feedback and, and kind of looking forward uh, to this, but, um, um, I, you know, I, I think if we had $4 million, for example, uh, sometime, some over the next 18 months, we could actually deliver 120 miles of uh, fiber to the pole. Um, and with service beginning sometime that summer, May, June or something of 22 as well. Uh, it, these things take, uh, as I looked at the, and I gathered this information from our feasibility study, our business plan, DV Fibers business plan, Val, which was written by ValleyNet, the materials that ValleyNet presented at the legislative hearing on the 19th and, and brought all that stuff together and, um, uh, and, and, and created this uh, kind of a calendar, phase one, phase two, phase three, which takes us out through 2023 and with some ideas of what the costs might be to something like this. Um, it's fuzzy on the lines. I have dates in there like March, April 21, which suggests a certain degree of certainty that like that might happen in March, April. But, you know, frankly, it could be a little bit here this way, a little bit that way. Um, but I think the overall timeline, it's similar to the information that Carol and Stan from ValleyNet were handing, were saying to the legislators, in other words, it's like an 18 month process uh, to do something like this. Um, so, and, and, and I thought it would be helpful to get my mind around that for a variety of reasons. One of which is, uh, you know, just budgeting purposes or applying for grants and for loans. Um, another is to figure out what it is we expect the project manager to do. Um, and so there was a lot, of, a lot of things that motivated me to it, but I've had trouble since the day I started here, <laughs> trying to come to grips with what is it we're trying to do. One of the things I discovered, by the way, in, when in, in rereading that feasibility plan, is that there are six color-coded routes in there, right? And um, uh, there's, they call them service routes, and it added up to 366 miles. In the district itself is like 1,200 miles, according to the Agency of Transportation. It's these are the 366 miles of the, the most underserved, and uh, they defined it. Fred Fred defined underserved as being uh, places without cable. So if you had cable, you were on these routes, okay. And so putting we're talking about putting fiber out to these particular places, and it expected to service anyone within 600 feet of a pole. And he had some numbers with regard to how many people that might be and take rates and all this kind of stuff. Uh, of course, um, the idea here is that eventually we're gonna get revenue streams. They're gonna help us move to the next phase and the next phase. But after we do these first three phases, in each phase, by the way, was two, uh, was two routes like blue and yellow or green and purple or whatever, okay? Um, but after we get through with those, we still have the other um 700 miles and you have to remember too that the the uh, feasibility study didn't include duxbury and washington uh, and it doesn't include the ardoff Im impact um and there's several other things it doesn't include right so uh, but i think in its in its broad parameters i i think that the timeline of like 18 months 
is is um, is kind of the uh, horizon we can we can look to is actually doing something if we get four million dollars. Um, it, it is not a financing plan. It's not a contracting plan. It's, there's a lot of things that it isn't that, that we still have to do. So one of the things we have in the works, for example, is the poles inventory plan, right? Every project starts with a poles inventory plan. You have to do that, okay? And then you do make ready, and then you do design, and then you do construction. And so every one of them has these elements in it. Some of those contracts can be uh, brought together into like one contract, but not all of them. For example, um, and ValleyNet in its DV fiber uh, piece of business plan, as well as in its uh, testimony, the legislature said one of the things you knew, need to do early on is hire an operator, because before you do your design, you need to have an operator that's comfortable with the, the hardware and, and systems that are going to be involved with making that thing work. And so ValleyNet doesn't like to work with this particular hardware and software, and they don't do fixed wireless, for example. Um, so if you're interested in them or somebody else, you need to get them on board early. And so it seems to me that after this RFP that we're doing for polls, we need to be doing an RFP to, you know, for, an, for an operator, okay? And so we get somebody to start looking at people and talking to them early, because real soon now, at some point in time, we know we're going to get money. We know we're going to get money. And the other thing that is not considered so much, but I'm hearing in the background for the discussions we've been having, and I've been kind of um, cynical about WEX involvement. Okay. But we, uh, the importance about having WEC involved and having them do the fiber and them own the fiber, we then don't own the debt. And as a financing model, that's very important that we don't have this debt on our balance sheets. It's a lot easier to have it as an operating expense. And so it would be an important thing if WEC could get its act together, that they would agree to do the fiber um, and, uh, and we lease the fiber for them. So there's a lot of things that need to fall in place and to be explored. But I think that if we could at least kind of agree on uh, what it is we want to accomplish, in, you know, in, in really more concrete terms than what we've been doing, then I think that we can start uh, actually doing them. Uh, so so I, I put pull the stuff together and send it to the Business Development Committee for the discussion on Thursday. Uh, I didn't send it broadly to the board. Uh, but I did send it to you, Jeremy, because I wanted you to see, you know, uh, what, we, what we were thinking about. Um, and um, and ho hopefully it'll be helpful when it comes out of the business development community and comes back to the board, I'm sure they'll be chopping on it for a long time. Yeah, and that was really great timing. I mean, I was glad to see that, that you did that, at least, you know, making sure everybody is, you know, beginning to converge on the actual timing of what the next year or two years or three years are going to look like. Um, a couple of observations that I want to make about what, what you just said is this, um, the the way that we defined underserved and the way Fred defined underserved uh, actually gets uh, that gets redefined in the the newest House Energy and Technology Bill that they're working on. So they define it as 100 symmetric, which means anything that's not cable or fiber is underserved. Which that was that's exactly you know Tim Brigland, Laura Sibilia lining up with us and agreeing that. If we are going to build this future proof, it has to be. It has to be this. Yep. Um, the other thing is they're requiring with all of the funding sources that were mentioned in this bill, all of them, all of them required CUD involvement, whether the grant went straight to a CUD or it had to be part of a CUD public-private partnership, something like that. Um, but they really, really put a lot of stock in the efforts that we're doing here and the other CUDs are doing throughout the state. So that was um, interesting. I'm sure there will be lobbying against that before it hits the, uh, you know, whatever final version. But uh, I thought that was, uh, that was great. And one of the things Laura Sibilia was talking about today is um, the fact that all of these efforts to change the landscape of broadband in Vermont are being done by 200 volunteers across all the CUDs. Nobody's getting paid for this except for, you know, consultant X and consultant Y, you know, and even the, the state is not really paying 
that much. I mean, we're, they're, they're paying the grants and whatever, but when you look at the scope of the projects that we're, that we're talking about here over the next 10 years, it's, it's pretty big. Um, so they recognize that we're volunteers and we need help. So they are talking about really um, investing in that. Um, and getting getting WEC to move will hopefully be um, helped also by this bill. There is a property tax exemption for fiber infrastructure that the utilities could take advantage of. Uh, furthermore, the property tax exemption could also be um, had by incumbent providers who partner with a CUD to guarantee universal coverage. So if Consolidated comes around and wants to partner with us and say, we want to build out every address in town X, then they could conceivably get a property tax exemption there too. Um, I don't know how the League of Cities and Towns or the individual towns are going to um, uh, react to that. Probably not uh, super excited, but it's out there. Um, so I have a, a couple a couple other things. Uh, I see your hand up, Ray. A couple other things I wanted to address <clears throat> before I turn it back to you. Um, the 18 month turnaround on the you know 150, 180 miles uh, is rather a lot more aggressive than Fred's cash flow model, which had that happening over. Oh, I think it was happening over three years. He had it broken out by like miles per quarter. He actually had like plans for like, this is the actual capital cost for quarter one of the beginning of construction, then quarter two and quarter three sort of ramps up to a certain a certain tempo, let's say, um, where we, we could do a certain amount of, certain number of miles per quarter once the uh, the project was, was rolling. Um, and so 18 months could, could be possible provided that we get all the ducks in a row and we have a contractor that can actually um, string the fiber that fast. Um, but I would just caution everybody to um, make sure, you know, just kind of cross the T's, dot the I's, and maybe, I don't know if we want to circle back around with Fred and ask him more about his his take on timing. I think Michael Birnbaum would also be a good person, or ValleyNet would be good places just to go to for uh, kind of sanity checking the numbers. Um, the governor's budget that was uh, revealed today. I think I passed it on to everybody. Uh, there's 1.5 million earmarked for a statewide poll, um, poll data harvesting study. So the idea is that there would be one kind of statewide effort to go and do this. I think we will probably start our poll audit before the budget actually would come into effect. So this would be a budget that would start this summer. Uh, so if we're going to get a poll, you know, poll audit going before then, we, we can't really wait. So otherwise we'd have to wait for the money to be available, for it to be dispersed to whichever organization, the Department of Public Service or this new Community Broadband Association um, agency, whatever. And uh, I'm not sure that we would see any funds and be able to execute any poll audit before the end of the year. I mean, so it's good that they're putting it in there, but I'm not sure that we're the we're completely the target audience. We could maybe go the next time around, you know, when we look at the rest of our project. But I think this first time around, we will not be able to avail ourselves of that. So I have a couple other things on this budget item, but uh, Ray, you did have your hand up. Jerry yeah. has his hand up too. Yeah, um, I guess a couple of things. One is that um, you were talking about 1.2 million for a poll audit. Um, we have for, for our thousand miles in our district, we have, we're gonna have 35,000, um, polls at $20 a poll at $700,000 or more. So um, that money's not gonna go very far, even when they parse it out for small projects. The, um, the estimate for that 18 month, that phase one, which consisted of two, uh, two colored sections in, in the uh, feasibility study is $4 million. Uh, so if we can get $4 million to uh, cover that, then that's what, we're looking, that's what we need. The Stan estimated the total cost for the state. People were talking about $300 million. His estimate is $600 million because he was defining underserved as being anybody that doesn't have cable because they're not going to get 100 over 100, right? Symmetrical. And finally, one of the legislators asked Carol, um, are there any CUDs that are ready now to do? And it was stage three, which was poll audit and, and do those other things. 
and, and anybody ready now? And she said CB fiber. Uh, there were a couple of others, but she said CB fiber. So um, they are going to be ready. They're all going to be poised and waiting for us to uh, ask for the dough. Yep, and I, I have a, uh, um, I owe them, I owe ValleyNet a meeting uh, specifically to talk about the the Northfield project, the, the little one with the CARES Act funds, um, but also to talk more about um, when we get to the point about the um, the operator RFP that you were talking about earlier, Ray, um, uh, they had some, they just had some questions. They just wanted to know where we were in the process. So I just, I'm just going to keep them up to speed on that. Um, the CARES Act funds have not actually formally been extended yet. That will go through. I don't think anybody's expecting that that's going to be anything other than a, you know, checking a checkbox. Um, but until then, we're sort of sitting and waiting. Um, we're also waiting on the Department of Public Service to release the matching funds for the VITA loan. Once they will release that, then we can apply for it for the what four hundred thousand dollars, and then we could be ready to go and pull the trigger and go after that four million dollars of VITA money. So we would have we would have that funding that Ray was talking about before. Um, and yeah, we should be hearing um, we get all the the quiet period of the RDOF stuff. I think that's over this this Friday. So we'll have some more, a little bit more information or we can talk a little bit more freely about it after that. Um, I think that was basically everything that I had to report back on this item. Does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add about this year or the Vermont legislature or grants? Yeah, Jerry? Yeah, this is Jerry. I'd, I'd like to get in there because I think there's something that's critically important here, and it's an it's an undercurrent that I'm uh, whenever I'm scoping and reading and and seeing what folks are saying, it's always there, but it's in the background, and that is the lack of contractors to do the work. And I think it's critically important that we don't wait for anything so that when something becomes available, we already have the paperwork, the background work, the planning is already done. Now we have an advantage because we started early and we're three years into this and you know, folks just, just can't take, you know, we, we moved, we've moved a long distance. It may not feel like that some days, but we've moved a long distance and, and went through a lot of uh, growing process and, and it's hard to compress that. So, you know, we have a position that we can leverage and, and I apologize for talking about it in competitive terms, but I believe we have to because there are only so many folks out there that lay fiber. There's only so many folks that can be operators that are gonna take on new systems and and we need to be as ready as we possibly can so that when that dollar hits it's obligated we, we we can't sit there and have money and not be ready to spend it really ready to spend it i mean with a contractor that we've already vetted and that we've you know we've already awarded on the condition that the money comes through we have to be that far along so that when the money hits it's spent. Otherwise, we're going to lose out. We won't be able to do it. We'll have the money and we won't have the contractors. I think that's wise, Ray. So I, I just add that um, uh, we've already identified six uh, contractors to target for our polls IDIQ contract. So that we'll have identified people in advance and start, uh, we'll qualify them, then we'll do our request for bids and work orders. And so we can churn that out quickly. When you see this uh, calendar that I've put together, you'll see that all of the polls uh, inventory work is done in 2021, for example, because after that it's make ready. We've already identified through uh, Green Mountain Power has been required as is WEC who hasn't done it, at least Green Mountain Power has provided the um, Public Utilities Commission with a list of those contractors which they have approved to do make ready work on their polls. And so we know at least three of those. 
And several of those, a couple of those also do the contractor work on the other end. Um, and we picked up some other names for contractors as well. So we're starting to get identify people to whom we can send these RFPs. Um, we just need to now kind of crank them out. Good news indeed. And I see uh, Alan had a comment in the chat. He says, this is why WEC is so important. They'll be able to string fiber. They've got the trucks, the buckets, and the workers. So that will certainly be a, uh, we're talking military time, we'll say this is a force multiplier, right? Because that's not a, that's not a workforce that's necessarily going to be available to any other entity other than partners with WEC, which is, I think, which is an exciting, exciting opportunity. So looking at those RDOF blocks, you know, where we're, uh, where the consortium, you know, won the rights to, to serve those places and to get those subsidies, <clears throat> you know, the, the partnership with WEC, I think is going to be um, super valuable. All right. So all the m military metaphors coming out in the chat now. Wonderful. Um, anything else folks want to talk about with this item? Um, oh, I was going to talk about olives, but then you said with this item, so never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, before we go to roundtable and kind of wind things down, um, the Business Development Committee, I'm sorry, the, the PDC, the Planning and Development Committee, they have a meeting on Thursday and will likely have some additional stuff for us to uh, consider slash approve or whatever. And we still have a um, committee report from them um, since D David's not here. If, um, if they want to have another meeting next week, how, how would you feel about that? A short meeting to do just business development committee approvals, or should we just wait until the, re the next um, regularly scheduled meeting, which is uh, February 9th? Does anybody have any any objection or thoughts? I'm just I just kind of want to plan ahead a little bit. Tom, um, I don't know if three weeks in a row of meetings makes sense. So I would say if we were going to do next week, then I wouldn't do the week after. Um, but I guess I would be in favor of leaving it till the ninth or whatever the next one is. Okay. Well, so our our last governing board meeting was two weeks ago. Oh, so I I see three weeks in a row. This week, next week, and the following week. That that makes sense. All right, so let's let's unless they have end up with a sort of burning desire to have, get something approved or we need to move fast on something. Let's yeah, let's just wait until the ninth then. Any uh, I don't see anybody ob ob that, objecting that or getting makes, upset about that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I I don't Ray remind me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's anything that burning that hasn't already come up. I mean that we're going to need board approval for, right? No, I, I didn't. I can't see anything in my head uh, at this point in time. Um, the planning Alan just, that's a nothing. Yeah, Alan just posted in chat the uh, impacts of RDOF on our planning, because that's going to have to be incorporated into whatever our initial plans are. Um, and so it says, uh, that's going to take some time. We want to make sure David and Michael are here for that. The ninth makes sense. So yeah, I, I don't know that we're going to be able to turn around an art off plan by next Tuesday. That is a good point. Tom, I saw your, your hand up again. Just out of curiosity, would art off discussion be an executive session meeting? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to be discussing, um, sensitive, you know, build strategy, then yeah. Oh, and I should also mention the um, House uh, Energy and Technology Bill also uh, reiterates um, the fact that CUDs can have uh, trade secrets mm -hmm. and that once a project is done, then we can re then we can release it as a public record. But once we're when we have competitive information before we're building something then we are we're entitled to uh, hold on to those as trade secrets. That would probably make sense for the um, planning and development committee to do executive sessions as well. Right. Yeah. If there's any sort of concrete, um, any sort of concrete uh, numbers or um, 
roots, addresses, getting down to that level, yeah, they would certainly want to uh, use executive session and do the uh, use the trade secrets exemption. Okay, anything else? All righty, uh, so let's let's wrap this up. Uh, let's go to roundtable. Uh, we'll go from the I'm going to go from the bottom of my screen. Uh, Jerry. Nothing from me. Thank you. Okay, Henry. Um, yeah, I just want to let everyone know that I I emailed you a link with the results of the last mile survey, and um, you can take a look at it. Uh, I don't know if any one has any feedback on it, um, but uh, you know I, I'd be happy to walk through that. There's some really interesting results in there, you know, like of the people that had bad broadband and knew of CV fiber. 80%, more than 80% were definitely interested in subscribing, things like that. Um, there's some really powerful stuff in there for making a case um, for the business plan. Cool, Tom? Uh, riffing on that, uh, the 19th meeting, um, ValleyNet really um, made a strong point about going after the pre-subscription planning as soon as you can and really getting that underway. So um, it seems like a next follow-up step is in place now. So the, uh, does anybody know if the communications committee is is pursuing a next step for pre-subscriptions? Because that would seem to be something that we have the data um, and we are you know going to be imminently within the next 12 months building. So we ought to know who those people are and get them I don't say on the hook, but essentially get them, you know, kind of as partners as we're building this out. Does anybody know? Ray? I, I think there's a couple parts here. One is that I think we're we're getting out over our skis a little bit with regard to this. Secondly, I think that it's an item for the finance uh, committee to be thinking about uh, what the subscription rates might be. Um, in my humble opinion. Okay, but so just to but just to echo what Tom was saying about ValleyNet is that if we have this information, we should at least be looping people in, and maybe we do a follow up survey. Maybe, but we need to engage these folks and make sure that they know that we will be um, we will be offering that. We need to have some facility for accepting that. Maybe like a like a contract, or can they put down? hundred dollar deposit then we then even if it's not the rate that that gets them two months of service or three months of service or we whatever uh tim um i had emailed back the group after the survey results came out just i had some questions about should we be engaging uh these people um should we be going after the pre-subscribers um I assume everybody got it. I just didn't hear anything back from anybody. So I didn't know if it fell on deaf ears or got forgotten about. No, I I, I think um, we, I seem to remember us talking about this and we were going to be uh, a bit cautious and we were going to leave this with the communications committee so that it would sort of be a unified communications front so that when we were going to go and ask folks for donations, when we were gonna ask folks for pre-subscriptions and these sorts of things that we, um, essentially didn't duplicate efforts and to make sure that we are all kind of pushing it in the same direction at the same time. Right. And if I'm, if I've misunderstood that anybody else, please, please call me out on it. But, uh, yeah, I would love to see the communications committee take, um, you know, take the next step, whatever that looks like. And maybe that's not pre-subscriptions. Maybe that's reaching out and doing a specific ask for, for gifts or you know putting together the paperwork for how we manage you know uh, promissory notes or loans if that's something that we're going to pursue we we asked people and there was a fair number of people that were willing to do that so i think um getting the ball rolling on one of these or all of them i think is is valuable yeah part of what i emailed also was um 
just reaching out to people that had questions in the comment sections of the survey, um, addressing those in our own town specifically, I, I feel would be a good uh, minor PR move on our as delegates as well. So I, I went ahead and uh, tried to answer some of those uh, people in my town. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I I have uh, a a tab that um, you can by town list all the people, name, address, phone number, email, all that. Um, I didn't post that on on that link that you have there because it's uh, proprietary, but I can give that to what you know each town uh, all uh, prepped for you. Okay. So and so yeah, if that um, if any of that stuff is proprietary, Henry, yeah, don't don't po don't post it to public um, forums, chats, etc. Right. Because so the way it is right now, that link is only known by uh, the people that I sent it to. It is on Tableau Public, and it doesn't have any uh, personal information. So um, it's not ideal, uh, but um, you know you can take a look and see if there's anything in there that you think is is um, should should not be that should be more confidential than it is. Is it possible for you to password protect that? I would feel much much better if that was password protected or some way that we can. Not with, that. Tableau, not with Tableau Public. So don't we have a Google Drive uh, and spreadsheet software and stuff up there uh, that we do have the I, link to and control? I can export it. Um, it's not as interactive, um, but um, yeah, I'll take a look at that. How, how much does a, does a proper license for Tableau cost, Henry? Do you have a order of magnitude? About a thousand bucks, but oh, yeah. um, the the, issue there is that you need a server for it um and, wow. or you you know you give the you know the the file to be viewed on by a licensed user i see okay well um yeah if you could if you could export that i think to a google drive that might be it might be better and if you, you can keep it i don't know if it's possible for you to keep um Make a copy, a link for yourself that's private. But I think having a link floating out there that has um, our survey data is probably not. Um, um, it, just, it makes me feel a little, a little uncomfortable. That's all. But I am, I am more paranoid than the average bear. So please, anyone else, if, if you're if yeah, if you feel. I, I mean, if you guys take a look and see what you think, um, I'd be happy. I'll, I'll take it down and. And it'll revert back to the form that it had, you know, where it's just a bunch of sheets, where right now it's a story and it kind of walks you through the whole survey. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it, it would lose a lot of its interactiveness if we took it off the Tableau public. Okay. So take, a, take a look at it and then we'll take it off and then I'll uh, export all the sheets and uh, put it on a Google Drive. Okay. All right. Thanks for that, Henry. Uh, I see uh, RD. No. Okay. Alan. Nothing. Yeah, I. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if, if other people have. You um, me tonight. Uh, what's that? I R don't know if other. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I can hear you. Uh, our RD has a little bit of a uh, of a delay, so it's uh, it's a bit uh, challenging sometimes to sync stuff up. Right. I'll wait. I think you're good, Alan. Go ahead. I have uh, received uh, inquiries from people about Starlink, which probably I, I think some of you know has now made available, at least to their beta testers, um, the opportunity to buy a dish and get connected to them. They've put up some new satellites, so they're operating a further, a little bit further south than they were before. But it, it's, it's really sort of interesting that 
this is the one provider that is going to be able to say that they can offer high-speed internet to everybody once they have their system up and running. And it, it, it's curious to me when I listen to the testimony in the state house that this hasn't been mentioned by anybody. And I, I, it, I'm very curious to see which RDOF blocks they won um, and how that's going to work and what the reception of them in this area is going to be. Uh, but that 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 was my interesting tidbit of the weekend. I, I I've had a couple of inquiries from people about this. So the the Ardoff blocks that they won, those are all those are public. Um, so you should be able to here. I, I think I got David's um, map here. I think that. Oops, I got to send it to everybody. Um. I th yeah, so they they got a, a couple of couple of locations in CV fiber territory, but kind of scattered. Um, well, I, I think it, it's it's so weird to me because they already are offering the service to everybody. Well, not everybody, to, to all locations. Eventually, anybody who wants it is going to be able to sign up with them. You know, they're trying to do a round of beta testing with with people who had signed up before. Um, but they they don't have to build any more wires or poles or any of that stuff. You know, they have the infrastructure in place just about now where they're going to be able to serve people. So I, I don't quite understand how Ardolf fits into their thinking. Um, and if if that makes things easier or more difficult for us. But at, at this point, they they are truly our main competitor because everybody in this area can probably within the next six months, if they buy a dish, can be getting served by Starlink if they want. Um, so I, I, I think that's true. Um, and I, I think RDOF was just a way for them to get some extra capital. Because I mean, because they can say, we, we can serve this and we can serve it right now. And then they can go and take all of the subsidies as they, you know, as the federal government opens that spigot. So it's just a way to, make the overall project cheaper. So th I, I don't think they care where those census blocks are. I think they they bid at a certain level for every census block. I mean, this is my guess. Um, and they won some of them because they can serve basically any of them. Um, does it change our calculus? Probably. I mean, it would be good to know what, what their, their rates are. And I think I, saw, I think I saw an email that had their rates. Um, my instinct is because the satellite is a, these links are a shared medium unless they put a lot more satellites up there if they get you know a couple hundred or a thousand subscribers um it's sh still shared bandwidth and so i think the more people that get on it the worse it's going to be for everybody i don't i don't know what sort of performance modeling they've done but that's my that's my instinct i see tim you have something to add yeah, I follow this very closely. Um, there is actually a Northfield resident that got the beta sign up. Um, I've been on the list for a while, but uh, I was chatting with somebody who who had it. Uh, but I follow all the feedback from all the users that use Starlink quite intensely. And it's uh, $500 for the beta test uh, pricing to buy the dish, $99 a month. Uh, they're getting anywhere from 50 to 150 megabits uh, up and down uh, speed. And um, they're, I wouldn't underestimate their technology for one second because uh, they keep on launching more satellites and more and more ground stations are showing up. They are doing uh, communication from satellite to satellite using lasers. Um, the technology is going to be as fast as fiber optics once it gets up on the satellites. Do you know what they're getting for a ping? What was that question? Do you know what they're getting for a ping? Yeah, the ping the pings are relatively uh, good numbers as well. I, th I think I recall between 13 and 19 uh, um, milliseconds for pings. Everybody has different experiences, obviously, too, though. Uh-huh. 
Uh, so Siobhan just posted in the chat, I think she was echoing an email from Tom, so it's like third hand at this point. Um, it said 50 megabits to 150 megabits per second and latency from 20 to 40 milliseconds in most locations. So I think it's a, your mileage might vary. I guess we'll we'll have to see. So it's I don't know that it's completely clear. I will say community. that even if I were to put plonk the money down on this to use it, I would consider it a stopgap until I can get fiber to my house. Um, Cause I've, I've, I've had satellites several times and never been happy with it. Maybe this is better. Maybe it won't suck. I am, I remain unconvinced. Yeah, this is worlds different than uh, HughesNet or any other satellite. Yeah, it's, it's completely different. The satellites are much closer, first of all. These are low orbit. I still okay. feel happier with the line to my house. <laughs> yeah, me too. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anything else, Alan? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Alan. Lowry? Yeah, hi there. <clears throat> uh, I think just to piggyback on, on Alan's point, um, I think uh, um, anything that we can do to um, kind of keep our communities abreast of, of our progress is important because if people don't regularly hear about the fact that, that there is really good progress, um, they are gonna shift to other opportunities like Starlink because um, no news just makes people assume that there's no progress. Um, so that would be something I would encourage just you know because like you said um if, if there's really um going to be some um wires on the ground in, in 12 months i think that'll give people a lot of encouragement to to, to either wait or um you know plan for it um and I, I the other thing i just wanted to say is that uh, i believe that um the regular delegate from middlesex uh, phil We'll be jumping back in in February. Um, I'll be confirming that with him. And if that's the case, then uh, I will be less um, present. But it's been a pleasure following along. Well, thanks very much for filling in for Phil while he's uh, recovering, Lowry. We do appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Tom. I'm good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Siobhan? Oh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Ray? Uh, yeah, a couple things. One is that uh, Monday, uh, 1 February, the RFP for polls inventory will be launched. Responses are due back 1 March. Uh, they'll go to the PDC committee for the review and recommendations to the board. Uh, this is a RFP to identify about four different contractors to do poll inventory work for us. And once we get them under a master service agreement, we will then issue a request for bids for phase one, whatever phase one is going to be, right? So my estimate, by the way, since we're looking at budgeting numbers, my estimate for polls work for phase one is about $80,000. So we're not talking about a huge amount of money to get us launched. Um, and make ready will cost us a lot more than that. But at least for now, uh, we're talking about 80, about 80 grand, certainly less than 100. That's it. Well, thanks, Ray. Tim? Uh, I'm good, no, I'm okay. Thanks, Tim. John? All right, nothing else here. All right, thanks, John. Josh? Um, I'm all set, thank you very much. All right, I'm also set. Uh, just wanna thanks everybody for um, for joining tonight and appreciating the momentum going forward. So um, I'm going to declare the meeting adjourned at 719 p.m. And we'll talk to you all soon. See ya. Good night. Good night.